I've always been so inspired by entrepreneurs. People like my mom. <laughs> <laughs> who as a single parent created a preschool in our house. <laughs> it was called the Unicorn School. <laughs> so she could make money and take care of me at the same time. Later she wanted to provide more, so she became an agent. One of the few careers that gives the flexibility needed for her to be a working mother. My mom has always been an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurship is what helped a kid like me, without much money, grow up to create a company that has a once in a generation opportunity to transform one of the world's largest industries. I believe that entrepreneurship is the greatest force for progress our world has ever known. Entrepreneurs drive our economy and our society forward. Think about the inventor who creates literally something from nothing that millions of people use every day and can't imagine living without. Or the immigrant who moves countries in search of a better life. Or the parent who takes on a second job to better take care of her children. Each of these people are bound by the common characteristics of seeing potential where others don't and creating a path where there isn't one. Now, there are over two million agents in this country alone, and every one of them are entrepreneurs. Everyone in Compass is an entrepreneur. Each and every one of you is an entrepreneur. Now, in the last year, I shared two important things. First, our mission, to help everyone find their place in the world. Because we know a home is not just a home. It's a neighborhood. It's a community. And it provides a sense of belonging. Then we talked about our 2020 vision. 20% 20 market share in the top 20 cities by 2020. Creating inevitability on our path to building the single platform where all real estate activities take place. And not just the transaction, but mortgage, title, insurance, escrow, move-in services, contractors, inspectors, furniture, one platform, one login. So we have our mission, and we have our vision. But to make our mission and vision a reality, we need to have a common set of core values. So what better to guide us than the greatest behaviors and characteristics, values, principles of the best entrepreneurs? So today, I am excited to share with you the eight compass principles of entrepreneurship. <laughs> If everyone in this room and everyone watching across the country lives these principles, I promise you, we will achieve our mission and will exceed our vision. So with that, our first principle, dream big. So every night when I go to sleep, I dream about the future. It's literally what I do to calm my mind. And so next year, things are gonna be so great because I compass and I fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> my earliest memories as a child were seeing my mom tuck me into bed at night. And she never said, have sweet dreams. She said, have big dreams. And I've been dreaming big my entire life. And I've always been so inspired by those that dream big. People like J.K. Rowling. She was on welfare as a single parent, struggling to put food on her family's table. And she could have easily given up her dreams of being a writer. But 500 million Harry Potter books later, 
We're sure glad that she didn't. Or Elon Musk. He sold his company PayPal, could have easily retired. But no, no, he started dreaming bigger about creating Tesla to help save the Earth, to get us off of fossil fuels and onto sustainable energy. But just in case he failed, he created SpaceX, a <laughs> spaceship company, <laughs> to help save humanity. That's a big dream. <laughs> As entrepreneurs, we refuse to think small, and we don't let anyone or anything prevent us from pursuing our dreams. We're all on an entrepreneurial journey. Whether you're a student who's first in your family to go to college, whether you're an athlete that puts in 110% in training, or whether you've applied for a small business loan, I know that each and every one of you are capable of even more than you think. That your ambition is the cap to your potential. That you're never gonna do more than your dreams. And so I'm asking you to embrace this first principle and dream big. The next principle is move fast. Now you have to know as an entrepreneur, if you don't move fast, someone else will. How many of you remember the e-commerce company? It was doing great, it was just a little slower than Amazon. How many of you remember the swimmer that came in second place to Michael Phelps? I don't. Rare opportunities are just that, they're rare. And if you move slow, you're gonna miss them. Speed matters to everyone. You're never gonna find a customer who wants a slower response to a question. <laughs> or a client who wants their problem solved, just any time later, that's fine. <laughs> time kills deals. Time kills opportunity. The only people that want you to move slow, the only people that want us to move slow, are our competitors. The future belongs to the entrepreneurs and to the companies that move fast. The next principle is learn from reality. Now, great entrepreneurs love to learn from their customers. So take um, a restaurant owner who's talking to the regulars, or a mayor who's reading her mail from her constituents every day. Or it could be a teacher saying, you know, what's going on at home? You know, I'm from San Francisco, and when I was in high school, I had a big dream. I was going to be the best DJ in the San Francisco Bay Area. <laughs> and so I took all my savings from babysitting <laughs> and I moved fast before my mom could tell me not to. <laughs> and I bought a bunch of DJ equipment. Now, I never ended up being the most skilled DJ per se, and I never had the best equipment, I couldn't afford it. But within two years, I became the most utilized DJ in the San Francisco Bay Area high school system. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I was able to make enough money to help pay for part of college. Now the secret to my success was that I learned from reality. Here's what I mean. Most DJs, they would play the music they wanted to hear the music they liked. You could have people you know, walk to the DJ booth, buy people, and say, hey, we want this new song, and they wouldn't play it. They wouldn't listen to the customer right in front of them. I was always the exact opposite. I played whatever they wanted. Because to me, the difference between playing what they wanted and not, listening to the customer or not, was the difference between being invited back or not, between, have, between having a full dance floor or a half empty one. The secret to Compass's success is very similar. Compass is the first company in the history of real estate to really listen to agents and to build for them. Good leaders must be good learners. And by definition, to be a good learner, you have to be a good listener. So always learn from reality. The next principle is be solutions driven. Now as a company, you have to focus on revenue, you have to focus on profit, strategy as well. 
But more than any of that, you need to focus on energy, the energy in a company. Some companies have the kinds of people that give you energy, and some have the kinds of people that just suck it out of you. I call them energy vampires. <laughs> now, when flow and momentum is everything, you can't have the kind of person in it that says no, because then the flow stops. No, no is the killer of dreams. No is the killer of great ideas. It's the end of a conversation. As an entrepreneur, you have to believe in that challenges are what make opportunities possible. You have to believe in solutions, in love finding a way, in love making the impossible possible. Always be solutions driven. The next principle is obsess. Obsess about opportunity. I believe you obsess about what you love. I obsess about my daughters because I love them. I obsess about this company because I love it. You're never gonna find an entrepreneur that doesn't obsess. You know, think about Beyonce. She's not gonna just go through the motions at a performance. You know, Steph Curry isn't gonna skip practice. Or Jeff Bezos at Amazon isn't gonna say, hey, Amazon, I declare we're fast enough at shipping. No need to go any faster. Six hours is good enough. Let's go on to the next problem. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. To build something great, you need to care more than it makes sense to care. And it sounds simple, but the very act of caring can be a competitive advantage. So treat every interaction and every experience as an opportunity to make things better and better and better. And when the average person says, I think they're good enough, get better than that. Obsess about opportunity. The next principle is collaborate without ego. Now my daughters love Moana. <laughs> I have watched this movie more times than I'm proud to say in public. <laughs> and if you want to test me, I could probably sing every song afterwards. I'm not. <laughs> but you know, when you watch these movies, these Pixar movies, you really think, how do they do it? Time after time after time, create such amazing movies. I believe it's because they have mastered the art of collaboration. Just look at the credits. Hundreds of people spending four to five years collaborating. You have animators, storytellers, musicians, voice actors, technologists, all collaborating without an ego. 100% focus on making the best movie possible. Nothing else matters. Now, nobody succeeds alone, whether you're Pixar or anyone else. And so you have to be the kind of person that people want to work with. So every person you interact with should leave that interaction wanting to work with you again. And it's pretty simple. Just ask yourself, what kind of person do you want to work with? And be that person every day. Collaborate without ego. The next principle is maximize your strengths. Now imagine a world, not a company, an entire world where everyone was doing what they were best at and most passionate about all the time. How fulfilling and energizing and exciting would that world be? But instead, we live in a world that is obsessed with our weaknesses and our flaws. I'm too fat. I'm too short, I'm not smart enough. I know that there is greatness in each and every one of you. I believe in you. And I know that the more you're focused on your strengths, the more successful you'll be, the more passionate you'll be, and the happier you'll be. When I was working at McKinsey, the White House, and Goldman Sachs. I was never my authentic self. I was always just trying to be what other people wanted me to be. But that changed when I met my beautiful wife, Venice. 
<laughs> and for the first time, I found someone who loved me for exactly who I was. All the good, all the bad, and the flaws. And she taught me to do the same for myself. So now I don't love myself despite my weaknesses. I love my weaknesses because that makes me me. That's who I am. In order for you to be your best self, you have to be your authentic self. You have to know in your heart that your imperfections are part of what make you perfect. The reason I'm so much better now at Compass than all those other companies isn't because I'm working harder. It's not because I'm smarter. It's just because for the first time in my life, I'm not beating myself up every day, focusing on all the things that I'm bad at. I just focus on what I'm great at and what I like doing. And it's fine if I'm not good at something. I'll surround myself with people who are. We live in a world where people are going to bed every night thinking about what they did wrong that day and their weaknesses. I ask you to go to bed every night thinking about what you're doing great, your strengths and your dreams, your big, big dreams. The last principle is bounce back with passion. The true test of an entrepreneur is not how you're doing when things are going great. Anyone can be amazing when they're on the top. It's how energetically and passionately and positively they bounce back from the bottom. Compass was founded five years ago. And we set out to transform the way rentals worked in New York City forever. It would never be the same after us. <laughs> Unfortunately, six months after launching, it was absolutely clear this would not work. This business model could not succeed. I had never been more terrified. I got married just five months earlier. My wife was pregnant with our first daughter. I convinced 30 of my closest friends and family to invest into the company. And I hired personally 50 people to come leave their companies and join us on our mission. And so I, I told the team, I said, we have to pivot to save the company. We have to pivot from rentals to sales. We have to hire top agents and learn from them. And people were infuriated. They lost confidence in me. They said that I wasn't the leader. I didn't have the vision and the strategy to, and to carry out the original plan. They even asked me to quit. I remember <clears throat> walking in the door that night, sitting down at the dinner table with Denise, sharing with her what happened, and just asking her, what, what should I do? You know what she said? She started by saying, I believe in you, and don't quit. <laughs> and I really needed that. That was the worst day of my professional career. But then you know what she said? She said to bounce back. And that's exactly what I did. I bounced back with passion. Although a third of the team quit when we pivoted, we did pivot from rentals to sales. We started hiring top agents, listening and learning from them. Every month became better and better and better. And not only did I bounce back, but the entire company bounced back to where it is today. Do you know how many people thought that we would never be where we are today? <laughs> Just go look at Google News. Put in Compass. <laughs> and you will see five years of people saying, you're going to fail. You're going to go bankrupt. Investors are going to walk. Agents are going to leave. Five years of negativity. 
And do you know how much time, just guess how much time I spent thinking about all that? Absolutely zero. Because I'm too busy dreaming big, moving fast, you know, learning from reality, you're maximizing strengths, <clears throat> obsessing about opportunity, and bouncing back with passion. You have to have the resilience and the grit to turn away the naysayers and to keep on moving forward no matter how much life tries to knock you down to your feet and prevent you from getting back up. Resilience and grit are the defining characteristics of the entrepreneur. It's the difference between someone who's living their dreams and someone who's living with regret. It's the difference between an entrepreneur and someone who just had a good idea once. How many times has someone told you that you can't do something? How many times has someone made you feel like you can't do something? Now, worse than that, how many times have you made yourself feel like you can't do something? I am here to tell you that you can, that you can do whatever you want. And we, we're living in a world where we're dealing with some of the biggest challenges our society's ever known. The type of challenges that are gonna define a generation. But we have a choice. We can either sit back and live in a world that others are creating or we can embrace principles like these and create the world that we believe in. A world where there are no barriers between where you are and where you belong. A world full of people that come up with a big dream and move fast on it to make it a reality and come up with a, a bunch of great solutions they can obsess about and collaborate with. And how, of course, they don't have an ego and they're maximizing all their strengths. If they don't have a strength, they don't care. They'll surround themselves with people that have that strength. And whenever there is negativity of any kind, they just bounce back with passion. A world full of entrepreneurs, the kinds of people that do impossible things every day, and they know that anything is possible. A world full of people that are trying to make themselves better and the lives of those around them better as well. This is the world I believe in. This is the world that I see coming to life when I look around this room. I see it when I travel the country talking with agents and employees in every city. And I see it on the faces around my Shabbat dinner table every Friday night with my wife and my two beautiful children who I encourage to dream big just like my mom did for me and who I encourage to become entrepreneurs one day themselves. I am humbled to be playing a small part in building this world with all of you. <laughs> we are a company of entrepreneurs. And these are the principles that guide us. Thank you.